Hey guys, we're standing out here in front of a great big rack of Dreamweaver Spin Doctors, Super Slims, and all kinds of fun products. Why? Because we are headed out on the big water today, Lake Huron, out in front of the port town of Tawas, Michigan. Now this is a town we're gonna to be spotlighting multiple times this year because this is one of those unsung fisheries. So stay tuned for a great mixed bag action here on Lake Huron, right in front of Tawas, Michigan. He's bending, yeah. Oh, you do. Fish or bottom? Well, that means I got to get the net. <laughs> oh yeah, a little walleye. You called it, Mark. Probably a keeper though. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Wow. That's a perfect little fish. I just like the colors on them. You know what I mean? The I, colors are just I do down. too. And I love the fact. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome here out on Lake Huron with Captain Mark from Real Fishing. And uh, we're going to show you a really cool and Mark underrated bite that goes on here in the summer, correct? I think, I think it's absolutely phenomenal the bite that we have up here all year. And uh, the fall just gets better with just multi species, a lot of different fish, a lot of great eating. Stay tuned here on Fisherman's Digest. So, what we're doing today is running a typical salmon spread out here. And while Mark reels this in, we've got some seven color, we got 10 color, we got 100, I mean 200, 250 coppers, we've got divers, we've got riggers, we've got a whole plethora of stuff you'd normally fish for silverfish with. And what you've got here in this fishery, basically from northern Saginaw Bay is right down there where you got Tawas and then the turn to Augre. And we're on this slide shoreline here. You'll have this group of fish that is mixed up. They're Saginaw Bay fish, right, Mark? Yes, they're they Huron are. fish. Yep. These these are walleyes. They're Atlantics. There's uh, an occasional pink. There's steelhead. There's an occasional king. There's always lake trout, ever present lake trout here in Lake Huron. So, I mean, this is what you're going to get when you come out here and fish the sunrise side. And we've just witnessed a beautiful sunrise here this morning, Mark. And uh, we didn't take us long. We got our fish set up in the water. We got our line set up, which pulled our speed back to the correct speed, and now we're catching fish. Come on now. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. I was, I was messing around with stuff. That's oh, look at that. I know you were. Look that. at this group of fish. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, oh. there's some nice fish right there. <laughs> That's nice fish. This right here is a product of a John experiment. Do not do it. <laughs> we'll explain later. Mark, let me do it. It wasn't Listen, fair. I do need the net, though. Well, the net's right there, Mark. I know. It's fast, let's, friendly. Let me get that for you. Efficient I got it right into that diver. Well, that's a nice walleye. Or no, it's a laker. I got her into the diver. You got her and into we're the twisting diver, Mark. In circles. Well, hmm. Hang on a second. There we go. When in doubt, pass the rod underneath. All right. This is an experienced Lake Erie, uh, Lake Huron, Saginaw Bay fisherman. When That's you can, right. <laughs> when you pass the round under and through. And, and do whatever you got to do to get her right. in the boat. Good job, Mark. Yeah. Good job. Show that off. That's I'm steering. Yep. 
And that's really, isn't that, Mark, just a perfect eating right. size that's fish? Right, that's a great eating size fish right there for us up here. I mean, we do get them a lot bigger than this, but this is actually one of the, just a great eating size fish up here. And uh, on a spin and glow and dodger, show this particular it. spin and glow here that I've been using. We'll show it off. Um, has been absolutely my favorite out here. Um, usually get about six, seven bites on it a trip. And the key for me has been the, tra I call it the trash can, the attractor here. Just plain silver with about a 21 inch leader here. And it's just been money up here for trout. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Angler Quest, built with purpose. Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system. Strike King, tie one on. Garmin. That was so cool because we had just gone through, Mark, that whole pile. whole pile of fish. And just remember, guys, when you're fighting these fish, you get a real active one like this. It's not like a race to get in. You know, sometimes you just got to let them yep. wear, wear themselves out a little bit. It's like Mark said, if this is a steelhead, I'll let you clear that yep. line out of there, Marky. If this is a steelhead, you don't want to get him in too quick. You want to let him wear himself out a little bit. Might be just a real energetic laker, but he is acting steely. Yeah. A lot of head shakes. And we've been catching some really nice eight, 10 pound steelhead here. I mean, some really, really nice fish. And that's really, uh, I tell you what, that's good eating right there. Yes, it is. I'm too. You want to talk about grilling to the max, that steelhead. That's one of them. Is, that's that and coho and Atlantics, yes. those three. Pinks, but I mean, pinks down here are so infrequent other than for maybe a week or two, isn't that right? Yeah, we had them here for a couple weeks. Exactly, and, and early then, August. Yep, and then they kind of left here the other day. Well, so. their natural migration is yes. up north. They'll go through Alpena, Sheboygan, then they'll go through the Straits and they'll head up into Detour Pass and really, that detour pass is where you want to get them because oh. they're they're constricted right into that area. Yep. So tight. Now this one was on a diver and a wire diver, and uh, we had it set out about 225, so on a three set. So that's going to get you down. Mark and I both looked at each other because we both fish a lot and said ah, 70 to 75, and that's exactly right. That's about what a what a diver on the out is going to get you down. About one to three. For every three foot of wire you let out, you're gonna get you're gonna get about one foot of depth on a three set. I tell you what, we are out here today not for trophies. We are out here for grilling and eating fish, and they are cooperating perfectly. It is a lake trout. I know. I I I kinda thought it was just a hard fighting Laker. Yeah, and it is. But it's a nice one, boy. Yes it is. There's no doubt about That's, that. That's uh that is also perfect eating size fish right yes. there. I got you in that mark. That's the nice thing about coming up here is you just never know what you're gonna get on any particular fish. Any particular lure that you have out, you just never know what you're gonna catch. These things that come out of temp. And the cool thing, Mark, is is that that it just makes for such a fun day. I mean, you just, like you say, you just don't have a clue. No, you never know what you're going to have on at any given moment. That's the beauty of fishing up here on this side. <laughs> we can't get to where we want to go, Mark. <laughs> I'm just going to steer for a while. Yep. Well, we're clearly in the right spot. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. I would hit another GPS coordinate, but it's so darn close to the one we just caught that it's right. pointless. This whole shoreline basically from northern Saginaw Bay where it turns there at Tawas and heads north, this, this right here is what you're gonna get. It's a nice walleye. Is it? No? 
Another lake trout? Walleye? No, it's a nice walleye. Big walleye. Big walleye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. You want multi-species action? This is definitely the place to be. This is definitely the place, and we'll hold this up so we don't get it all messed up, but let me tell you what, guys. As you can see, you can't stage this right there. So what we're doing here, as you can see our, our patterns here, we've got a, a flat over here of real stable 90 foot and then we've got a steep break out to 130 and then 140. And what we're doing is keeping our boat on the actual break itself, on the slope. And it seems like right now we're in 110. Seems like the fish are biting right from the top of this roll at 95 all the way down to 120. And then so what we're doing is just zigzagging. You can see it, we're just zigzagging up and down this slope when we run out of marks we go ahead and turn around and head back north. We're going south right now, and we're just using the graph and the mapping capabilities with the depth contour lines to isolate and identify exactly where we should be fishing. Once we catch a few fish, then we know what depth they're holding in. Now, as the day progresses, they might slide out from 100 to 110 or 110 to 120. And that's why we just keep expanding our zone. Right now we're at 10 in the morning, that's fish number eight. Um, so we've done good so far today, but we may have to expand that zone out to 120, we just don't know. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Polarcraft, the toughest built aluminum boats, bar none. Dreamweaver, home of the revolutionary spin doctor. Lose, feel the difference. Wave Pro, best ride on the water. You know what this means? We're gonna not starve to death no, tonight. No, we're but... gonna eat good. Not that I need it, but. Oh yeah. None of us need it, who cares? <laughs> we're getting old. I'll hold that, will you? Negotiate that. Oh, he's loose. That's the best way ever. Yes, it is right there. Show that off in the sunlight, Mark. Then we'll have Mark show you this little rig here. Here you go, Mark. Yep. And it's been crazy effective so far today. It's been very, very good for me. So again, spin, a spinning glow. I do have a couple glow beads down at the bottom. The reason why I use the glow beads on the bottom is obviously for a tr to be attractive. And then the spinning glow seems to spin better on that than it does just the plain knot itself on the hook. And then I've got about 20 inches of line here. Again, just to a plain trash can. I, I refer to it as, uh, us old timers, that's what we refer to it as. Just a silver tractor. Thing's money up here on Lake Huron. It's a nice fish, whatever it is. No, nope, we got another fish on the rigger. Yep, I saw it. This one? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> he said shaking. Perfect. Well, that's what happens when you come to come to this whole sunrise side. And uh, we've got a double going right now, but he doesn't know it because he's still hooked to the rigger. Oh, yeah, this is a... Might be a laker or a walleye. I don't know, lakerish. Yeah, it is. Right there, when you see him thrashing, if you had to let, if you had to let that, if I'd have hoisted him too much, I'd have put a hole in his mouth. Why do something as unsafe as this by walking out on the tongue, trying to hook up your boat? and wasting valuable time at the landing when you can just simply drive up and click it in. Driving the boat up the trailer and leaving the motor running while you walk up to the front, hang over the bow, try to hook up your straps, your chains, and crank it all in is incredibly unsafe. Plus it does a lot of damage to the landings itself. With the draddle latch found on boat to trailer, there's no power loading needed. You simply back the trailer down into the water, bring the boat right up the trailer, and click in. Yep, 
If you're wondering how the latch works in extreme situations, such as current and wind, in this situation he's completely sideways due to the current. All he does is line up the front of the boat, drive right up, and it snaps in. How it works is that the jaws that are inside the latch actually grab a hold of the eye that's already on your boat. Once the latch has it locked in, you simply just pull the boat and the trailer forward up into the dry water's edge. Once you're up in the dry, then just hook up your safety chain and strap just like you normally would for travel. To release, simply pull the handle or add a rope to the handle and just pull the rope from inside the boat. The latch is compatible with fiberglass boats just like these you've seen here and also we say typically 10,000 pounds or less for weight. It also works great with aluminum. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Products. Flowfast, world's leading portable fluid transfer system. Drato, catch and release boat system. So what we've got here, I've got my Polarcraft Kodiak 20, and as you can see, Mark and I have got tons of room back here to fish, catch, land fish, net, do all of that. One of the reasons is, is because an efficient rail-mounted rod holder system, right here we've got the Trax Tech six-foot rail right here on our top deck, and then we've got our electric riggers that could handle not only a down, but also a slider, uh, a second rod, I mean, we can handle our, uh, our ratcheting uh, dipsy holders here that are self-adjusting so you can help just rip that out, a second one here, and then a set of triple trees. Now this also comes in a quad. If you were going to have a little bit bigger boat and you wanted to have that fourth rod, that's available. And of course this tool caddy and cup holder. I really like this because I'm sitting here, I like to have my water right here in my insulated cup my scissors for cut and line, my pliers, everything's right there. I got a second rod ho cup holder on the, each tree. As you can see over there, Mark's got his beverage over there. We've got our bo board caddies for our offshore boards right here. Everything is neat and clean and it keeps this back of the boat area wide open so that we don't have stuff laying around. When we're fishing, it's on our lines. When we're not fishing, it's in the board caddies headed back to the ramp or out to our spot. This track sex system is efficient, it's clean, and most importantly, it gives you the ability to fish properly. You know, when you think about Taos, one of the things that you really have to consider is that so many people stop when Saginaw Bay ends, and they don't realize that the fish don't know there's a sign there that says stop. And I, I'm not trying to be funny, what I'm trying to say is as those fish leave the greater Saginaw Bay area, especially those bigger fish, they swim around that corner and they fill up a deep edge right outside of the port town of Tawas here, and they fill that edge up with a wonderful mixed bag of walleye, lake trout, steelhead, and later in the season, Atlantic salmon. And I'll tell you what, this is really, truly an unsung sport fishing town. I mean, there are so many great fish. As the summer progresses, these fish don't go anywhere. That's kind of the cool thing about Taos. They simply slide out. Whereas in a lot of places, fish will leave. Here in Taos, they don't leave, they simply slide deeper. And that's one of the things that we're gonna to endeavor to show you. But if you're coming here and you're looking for an unsung town that's got great fishing, that offers all of the things that small town Michigan, a lakeshore community offers, Tawas has got to be one of those places that you come and you visit. It's got the beauty of the Lake Huron shoreline. It's got an inviting downtown with lots of cool, unique, eclectic shops. It's also got sport fishing that's second to none for lake trout, walleye, and perch. It also offers a late season uh, dabbling in the Atlantic salmon that have been starting to push down the shoreline. Tawas is truly a multi-seasonal, multi-species destination. There's charter captains available to take you out fishing out on the big water. There's so many things to do in this neck of the woods. And the best thing is that you come back to an inviting 
tourist oriented town that is completely committed to making sure that everybody has a good time. This is truly a multi-species, multi-seasonal uh, community. So put Taos on your list as a place, lists of place to visit. I think you'll be very, very happy that you did. Another lake trout. <laughs> a jumper too. I'm trying. <laughs> now he's caught in the thing. There we go. Who needs a net? Who needs a net? <laughs> we don't need a net here. That fish. That's crazy. We're catching lake trout. Hey guys, wasn't that high. an awesome show? I mean, thanks so much to Captain Mark from Real Fish and Charters. He, he took the time. He's, he's right here local. He's chartering here in the month of uh, end of July and the whole month of August. It's a really, really fun place to fish. This Taos community has got a lot going on, and we hope you put it on your list of places to stop and stay. But hey, had an awesome day with Captain Mark. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Fisherman's Digest. Closed captioning is brought to you by WavePro. Best ride on the water. Online at waveproshock.com.